Howdy, howdy. It is Monday night, and that means it's time for... Well, it looks like we're gardening. <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've got the only tool that you ever need in the garden. When I think of gardening, this is it. So um, I'll be revving that up a bit later. But um, we've got a special guest tonight who's going to talk about oils. I feel really good waving this around. Um, we've got a special guest. Who have we got? We have the amazing... We should call her Amazing Amanda because it's like A and O. <laughs> and Amanda's coming to us live from the Gold Coast. So we have to cue the music first. So you have to oh, yeah. dance and do silly things like we do. Yep. So we are talking about oils. gardening. Gardening. Oils in the garden. Yeah. Amanda is awesome. Like she grows all these succulents and she knows everything about gardening. I like me. I might have a gardening hat, but that's about it. And so is that what you wear when you garden? Have you seen me garden? I've never seen you garden. I do have a worm farm though. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about gardening, gardening with Amanda. <laughs> well, we're in time. Gardening, gardening with Amanda. Gardening. gardening with Amanda. And weeds and all gardening that stuff. With <laughs> gardening. Okay. Right on, woohoo! Alrighty. Okay, so that people can get to know you, Amanda, tell us why Young Living. Why did you choose Young Living? I chose it because it really resonated with what I am all about. So I'm about the environment. I'm about caring for people. I'm about um, and having fun. And that's exactly what Young Living is all about. So that is, that is me. I, I like looking after our family and helping people go low tox is also about the environment and plants so when young living discovered me like i was like this is just exactly what i was looking for so that's why young living young living is definitely um you know right up your alley and that's a lot to do with the seed to seal so you know, you've got to experience seed to seal firsthand, haven't you? Um, I am really passionate about seed to seal and the company, and that is why, um, like, when I first heard about seed to seal, like a light bulb moment kind of went off for me, and it totally aligned with what I'm all about. And like I said just before, looking after the environment, um, caring, and having fun. So, like, I just before I go into a bit of seed to seal stuff, I come from a really passionate gardening family in Victoria. Uh, Mum spends nearly every day in her two acres of garden. My sister teaches permaculture all over the world and is really passionate about um, sustainable living and having sustainable earth for us to live on, which is about permaculture. And my dad is all about farming. So farming naturally and having regenerative farming, which is really important these days is that we're looking after the land. So I come from a really earthy family and Seed to Seal is all about looking after the earth. And that is, um, yeah, that's, that's like I studied horticulture uh, 25 years ago when I left school and I actually didn't do a whole heap with it in the last 25 years or up until the last three years when it all kind of came back in a um, circle and oils have really brought like one of my passions back into my life which is the earth and plants and yeah so so like the seed to seal is is great care is taken to preserve and protect the natural resources which that's what goes like the whole family. So, um, and Kim, you've been posting recently in Team Valor about like some fun facts, um, how like one recent one was how the Ocotilla farm in Ecuador only uses non-GOM seeds that are cultivated through natural pollination. Now, like non-GOM GOM means a product, a product means a product was produced without genetic engineering and its ingredients are not derived from genetically modified organisms so like this is awesome because so much of the world's produce is like genetically modified you know and there's been heaps of other fun facts that you've been popping up hey and you've seen it firsthand that so 
in America, they're so worried about GMO. Um, you know, in Australia, it, it isn't quite as bad. We still have a lot of GMO crops and, you know, particularly things like soy and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, in America, the Young Living's actually labelled their oils, uh, their culinary range, their vitality range as um, non-GMO for that very reason because people are really worried about it over there. Yeah, and and the, and the seeds over, all well, the seeds all around the world. So this is great, like that that farm, that Akatia farm, yeah. and Young Living, like the seeds still hand weed all their fields, and they use zero pesticides. Essential oils are used to keep away all the bugs, and that's what I'm going to talk about a bit in a bit, like. Um, making sure all our farms are practising sustainable farming. So, so a sandalwood tree needs to be 30 years old and 30 feet tall and must be 90% dead before they're going to use that. So that's, that's me, that's sustainability, you know. Mm. Um, if we run out of an oil, we're not going to source it from somewhere else just to have that oil on the shelf for us. They're going to wait and they're going to produce um we're gonna yeah wait until we can source it sustainability to be able to do that like we don't use any solvents or synthetic chemicals in the distillation process this is all seed to seal all the rigorous testing that they do um oils are carefully reviewed through every step of um production in order to meet and exceed industry safety and purity standards so that's like well beyond organic so which is amazing you know it's really good so that's what I'm passionate about really passionate now young living do yeah they have their own farms and they have their own partner farms and and um that have to follow the seed to seal guarantee and they're super transparent like you we are one of the only companies that you can go and visit their farms and see them like you've done all over the world and I last year got to do the tea tree farm in New South Wales which was like it's really special when you can actually go see how they're grown see how they weed and naturally do things like that it's really amazing and it really gives you like that buzz and yeah so that that's what and we got to do it we got to weed we got to plan we got to to do it all ourselves so yeah, it's, it's special. And then you believe, you know, then you realise that it's not just a marketing campaign, that this is a true philosophy of this company. And um, yeah. I think that that's, that's one of the best things, that you can visit the farm. So, you know, I haven't visited the tea tree farm, but I've definitely seen the Blue Cypress farm in Australia. And, you know, like, so we have them here and we have the mm. Sandalwood farm in Kununurra, the Kunzia farm in Tasmania. Like, you know, they grow, they grow the plants where they grow best around the world. So it's amazing. Yeah, in their natural habitats, so, which, is, which is really good. Now, I use quite a few oils on a daily basis, but I, what we're talking about tonight is gardening. <laughs> so, like, I have a house full of indoor plants, um, and when I'm pottering around cleaning and dusting the shelves and dust and cleaning the bathrooms, I give my little indoor plants a little spray with your thieves household cleaner because like our shelves, the plants collect dust too and they need a little spray and they need a little bit of love and they'll thrive on using that. So don't forget that one. Like when, if you've got indoor plants, they love thieves household cleaner. Um, I also use my veggie soak after I've washed all my fruit and veggies. So I'll scoop all that water up out of the sink and put it on my ferns outside and they are honestly thriving. But don't waste that water going down the drain. It's sustainable, right? Um, you need to scoop it up and put it on your plants and they will love you for it. I wonder if everybody knows that di dogs dislike black pepper. There you go. So you've got um, dogs, you know, peeing or pooing in your garden. That's how you deter them, by using some black pepper. And cats dislike rosemary. So I don't have any problem with my animals destroying any of my garden beds. But if you did, you could soak either black pepper or rosemary in some strips of material and put little stakes around and your animals won't go there. They won't go digging up your edges. You say that's how you deterred your garden. That's how you deterred your garden. That's right, Jeremy. <laughs> um, cinnamon bark is really good on your weeds. 
30 drops of cinnamon bark in your water and d- put, I'm quite a fan of weeding, hand weeding. I find it quite therapeutic. But if you need to give those weeds a bit of a blast, cinnamon bark, then I, weeds don't like that. So that's my few oily tips for the garden. And obviously, you know, you like the mineral sunscreen and the... Um... Or the outdoors. Love it. One of my favourites. And I soon to try your trick with the sp- sp- pump <laughs> to spray it. Like we use, I use the sunscreen every day. Every day, a tiny little pee on my face and as part of my moisturising. And you need to use your sunscreen outside. You need to wear your hats and and, and utilise your gloves, you know. So um, one of the things that we did in our gardening and oils workshop was to talk about companion planting. And it's really interesting how with companion planting, like there are certain plants that you can plant together, like tomatoes and basil and things like that. Well, if you don't actually want to plant with basil, you can actually make up a spray of the oils and spray around the plants with the companion oil. That's very cool. I've learned so much tonight. I knew none of that stuff. The, the world's endless out there and more research can be done around gardening and oils. But that, that's just a few tips. There's like I have lots of fun with workshops when it comes to gardening and oils and make these little succulent diffuser pots, um, which I think you've done over the years too, hey. But I am honestly addicted to succulents and always have been. I find I find growing them and putting them in my garden everywhere because they're, I suppose because they're really easy to grow. So they give you lots of joy because they grow fast and they can look pretty. But... Um, I've now got about 30 or 40 of these floating around the house waiting for a Christmas market. (laughs) Um, And they're really easy. So pots from Bunnings and um, little lava stone diffusers, which you would drop an essential oil onto. And you just get those at Bunnings too, don't you? As well, yeah. And look, the succulents are mainly from the garden. And I'm forever pulling them apart and spreading them so they grow a lot of love. But that's how the plant the comes all wrapped up. Can you see that? It comes with a little spray mist. What's in your spray mist? The spray mist has tea tree, lavender and purification. Literally a drop of each and water. So it, it will just keep your little succulent going. And then I often give it a little sample of oil so they can put a couple of drops and then come back to me needing to buy some more oils. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. And they are great. People love them. So, you know, we've done them at Mark. If, you know, you just keep advertising, like just a little ad now and then pops out, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas is coming up, birthday. Yeah, so it's quite, my, quite up my alley. <laughs> And I know um, I recently saw a post that um, Kylie Bryant did about you, you get your tip before about the Thieves Cleaner and she sprays Thieves Cleaner even on roses. So I've, I've seen her post do that too and we can always find that post and repost it because she mixes that. Well, she actually uses that with a natural product from Bunnings and mixes it together and puts it in a spray pump and sprays it on everything. So... Thieves cleaner is amazing. So if you can spray it on your plants and, you know, very multi-versatile. <laughs> um, anything else for us? No, I think that's me. Enjoy. Get out there in the garden. It's grounding. It's good for the soul. You don't need a um, chainsaw generally in a garden unless it's really big. I, I find it's a good you way. You haven't to been to our house. <laughs> I, I find it's a good way to separate my succulents. It's just... <laughs> anyway on that note thank you so much amazing amanda we've loved having you and you did an awesome job so you're welcome bye all bye